I'll leave my screen until you start. Okay. And I'm going to share my screen. Maybe. Uh, we are going to get started in just a minute with our presentation. Um, before we get started, I want to welcome you to the virtual college, ex college exploration for all Pennsylvania students, sponsored by the Pennsylvania Association for College Admission Counseling and StriveScan. PACAC is a nonprofit association comprised of more than 1,200 school counselors, college admission counselors, independent educational consultants, and other professionals responsible for guiding students through the important transition from high school to post-secondary options. We thank you for joining us today. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot hear or see you. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the full schedule at pacac.org. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within one week at that same website, pacac.org. Um, now I'd like to turn it over to our presenters from the University of Akron. Thank you. So uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Jay Koss. I'm one of the uh, assistant directors of admission at the University of Akron. Uh, and you know, thank you once again for taking time every day to come listen to uh, a little bit more about us. But I just wanted to jump right into the information. So um, you know, in case if you're not too familiar with Akron, Ohio, um, you know, we are located in Ohio's fifth largest city. Uh, we are a pretty urban campus. Um, you know, where we're located at, uh, the University of Akron, uh, our campus is sort of kind of up on a hill and then in the downtown area, we're located about a quarter mile away from that. Uh, we're about an hour south of Cleveland to give you a little bit more of like geographical areas. But you know, what we really wanna talk about is why students are choosing the University of Akron. Um, you know, number one is our outstanding programs. We have over 200 different academic programs you can pick and choose from. These range all the way from uh, you know, our STEM-based courses, which we're very well known for, so science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Uh, we have a nationally and internationally ranked business department. Um, of course, we just don't focus uh, solely on our STEM and our business. Uh, we have a pretty robust social science uh, you know, programs on our campus too. So things like psychology, sociology, criminal justice, uh, cybersecurity are all very popular. And we also do have arts, uh, you know, whether it be commercial art like graphic design or fine arts such as sculpting and painting. Uh, what really sets us apart are just those outstanding academic programs. And really tying into that is going to be the opportunity for you to get that real world experience. Uh, so I know I'm gonna talk about this a little bit more in the presentation, but 92% uh, of our spring 2019 undergrads, uh, you know, that went through the programs and graduated reported that they were either employed or continuing their education within six months of graduation. National average right now is about 81%. So I think a reason that we're far exceeding that national average is just about the, about the amount of opportunity right in our uh, backyard, so to speak. Uh, also, we have a very beautiful campus. Uh, it has over 80 buildings on about 218 acres. What's really convenient is that the whole campus is pretty condensed. So you can walk from one end to the other in probably about maybe 10 or 15 minutes. So if you're gonna be living on campus, you're no more than about a 10 or 15 minute walk away from any major building that we do have on our campus. Also, we have over 340 different student organizations you can become involved in. I know this is a huge part of your general college experience. Uh, the beautiful thing about our programs is it doesn't matter if you're an engineering student and you wanna have your own talk show on our WZIP or ZTV broadcasting uh, station, you don't need to be a broadcasting major or communications major to do that. Uh, so all of our organizations are, are pretty open for all of our students that are looking to get involved. And you don't have to wait until you're a sophomore or a junior. You, from day one, you can become involved as a freshman on campus. Of course, we're part of the MAC, the Mid-American Conference, NCAA Division I, uh, varsity sports. We have championship winning uh, you know, D1 sports programs on our campus as well. 
Um, and like I said, being in Ohio's fifth largest city, there's just so much opportunity for you to do things not only on campus, but also off campus. But a little bit more about us, in case you're not too familiar, the University of Akron, we have roughly about 19,000 students on campus. Uh, taking a look at our 2020 freshman incoming class, uh, you know, looking at the general overview, we enrolled about uh, 3,000 freshmen. This was their average GPA was about a 3.5, average ACT being a 23 or the SAT a little bit under uh, 1120. Now, I know that COVID has really kind of made things difficult for taking the standardized tests. So if you're a student and, and you're a senior right now and you haven't been able to take an ACT or an SAT, I don't want you to worry because we are going test optional for the fall 2021 incoming freshman class. So you can still be reviewed for admission and scholarship without your ACT or SAT test score. We also do have students from 46 of the 50 states and over 70 different foreign countries. So we are a very diverse student body. So if you are coming from Pennsylvania and you're gonna be studying on our campus, you're not just gonna be surrounded with students from Ohio and you know, Western PA. I mean, it's students from all over the country and in fact, all over the world studying on our campus. As I mentioned before, uh, with over 200 different academic programs, there's a lot that you can pick and choose from. Uh, I know that I mentioned we're very well known for our STEM programs. Uh, engineering is a very popular program on our campus with eight different tracks, all the way from aerospace systems to corrosion engineering. Uh, all those programs you know, come with an additional uh, option for you to do a co-op, which the vast majority of our engineering students are, are opting to do. Uh, business, a lot of different avenues you can go down within business to, whether it be HR, financial planning, economics, uh, you know, public relations, marketing. Uh, also, there has been a, a recent new addition put on to our CBA or a College of Business Administration uh, that was a very large investment in that building. But uh, if you ever come to our campus, I highly uh, you know, suggest that you take a look at that because it's a beautiful, uh, beautiful building with huge open collaborative learning areas and some new labs and just new technology for students to utilize. And then with nursing, um, you know, like we are being in Akron, Ohio, we have great working relationships with a lot of various hospitals in the immediate downtown area. Even students that are attending other universities come to Akron to do their clinicals because it's the only place that they could do that within driving distance. Um, and uh, like I said, you know, within the social sciences, psychology, criminal justice, uh, sociology are all very, uh, very popular on our campus too. Um, and within computer science and computer information systems, sort of a newer program that's gaining a lot of uh, attention is our cybersecurity. So if you're really into computers and you want to have like a, a flair of the criminal justice aspect into that, then the cybersecurity may be just what you're looking for. And then with academic support, this is another really big cornerstone of our philosophy at the University of Akron. So when you're coming in, it doesn't matter what program you'll be in, you're going to be advised by somebody in your specific degree path. Now, this is going to be your point person to make sure that you're being placed in the correct courses, uh, you're on track to graduate on time. If you do, if you do decide to change your major, uh, that's okay. Uh, you just want to make sure that you're connecting with your academic advisor so they can make that switch for you. Um, also, if you're you know, coming in, let's just say as an engineering student, you're not going to be competing against 500 students for you know, 100 spots. You're going to be in that program. Uh, we want to make sure there are students from day one are going to be in the program that they're you know, trying to earn their degree in and they're going to receive help every single step along the way. Some of those offices that can help you are things like the Office of Academic and Retention Support or ORS as it's commonly referred to as. Sort of a newer office, uh, it's actually grown a little bit, it used to be our Choose Ohio for STEM scholarship office, but they've taken on a whole new role. So now they're able to assist students from any degree path on our campus. So if you ever need help with applying for scholarship, uh, becoming part of a peer mentoring program, receiving tutoring help on campus, this is gonna be a great, uh, great office for you to get involved with. And then another kind of fun office, and, and I do a lot of work with them on campus as well as our Zip Assist office. So this is a great one-stop shop for you if you're a student on campus and you have a question, but you don't really know where to go. It could be all the way from how do I get a parking pass to how do I add or drop a class. Uh, so Zip Assist is, is going to be able to be your kind of one-stop shop for that, uh, but they have a whole host of other uh, amazing programs that can help students inside and outside of the classroom, uh, you know, from their first year all the way up until their senior year. Uh, we also do offer free tutoring services on campus too. So uh, at the University of Akron, you'll never be paying anything out of pocket in order to you know, receive any type of tutoring help. 
Um, there's you know options where you can get you know drop-in tutoring help. So if you're maybe taking a calculus course, you're, you're stuck on a really hard math problem, you can go into one of the drop-in sessions. Uh, through our Office of Accessibility, you're able to be paired up with your own specific tutor. Uh, so that is available too. Um, and you know, students do hold a, a lot of uh, study groups outside of class, you know, because we understand life happens. You know, sometimes you may sleep through a class accidentally or you may be underneath the weather. And uh, there's, there's a lot of things on campus that can help you uh, not fall behind. And then our Office of Multicultural Development, another phenomenal office um, that helps all different types of uh, diverse students, um, you know, not just by ethnicity, but also like the LGBTQ uh, program or, uh, you know, actual uh, association. Um, there is uh, peer mentoring that's through that office as well. So if this is something that is high on your priority list, I think the University of Akron will definitely provide what you're looking for. And then outside of the classroom, um, you know, there's a lot of other things students can get involved in. Um, you know, study abroad opportunities are very popular on our campus. So if a study abroad opportunity is something that you definitely have on your college bucket list, then I would implore you to do some more research and, and check out what's available. Uh, we have students that go pretty much all over the world. Uh, we do have some that are two or three week long excursions. Students can do a full semester or full academic year study abroad. Uh, and we're also pretty fortunate to have um, some pretty nice scholarships for some of our top students to help really reduce the cost of doing study abroad. Also, other things like research opportunities. Uh, so you're able to work uh, with your professors during your undergrad years and help them with research projects that really gets the ball rolling with your networking and helps to bulk up your resume. So when it comes time for you to do internships or co-ops, uh, you have a little bit more that you could you know, bring to that employer and show them what you've been doing inside the classroom. Uh, Career Services Center is another really amazing office that we like to spotlight on. So in the Career Center, uh, you can, you know, actually look at things all the way from resume building workshops to mock interviews. Uh, so you can come in day one as an incoming freshman and you can go to that office and say, you know what, I've never been through an interview process before. I don't have a resume. Uh, can you maybe help me along with this process? Uh, you know, when it comes time for our students to have their first interview, whether they're doing a co-op or an internship, we want to make sure that they're confident about talking about themselves, whether it be, you know, what they've accomplished inside the classroom and how they're looking to apply that in the real world and what they can bring to the table for that future employer. That's what our, you know, these future employers are really interested in. And I think our students are very well prepared when it comes to those interviews. And really all students are doing is going through and, and getting involved at Career Center and utilizing the free services that they have. Uh, we also do have career fairs. Um, so in our student union on the third floor, we have a big ballroom where we have hundreds of employers that come in the fall and the spring. Uh, so it's a great opportunity for students to get a lot of experience and a lot of networking connections in a small amount of time. Uh, so you're able to walk through that. A lot of our students will print off like a handful of the resumes, go around to a couple of different tables, learn a little bit more about the business or the organization that's there, and just start that networking process and get those connections built. Like I said, I know I mentioned this before, but the 92% we're very proud of, um, you know, since that national average is 81%. Uh, and, the, and the reason I think that we're exceeding that average is number one, those uh, research opportunities, and also just the amount of connections that we have in the immediate Akron area, also throughout the state and throughout the, the rest of, uh, you know, you know the uh, United States too. So I wanna go ahead and switch up gears a little bit and talk about living on campus. Um, so we do have nine different residence halls on campus. Uh, these are open to uh, freshmen. Uh, we don't have any designated freshman resident, residence halls on campus. Every single one of our residence halls comes with high-speed internet, cable TV. We actually have our own Res Life Cinema where we show movies that are right out of the theaters for our students that are free of charge. And every single one of the rooms does have uh, central air conditioning. Now, I know that's pretty rare for Northeastern Ohio, but trust me, it's really nice because there are going to be some times in... August or September, or even October, where it's gonna be really nice to have your own AC units. And of course, we do have free laundry. Now, I know this is not gonna be the determining factor of why you choose to come to Akron, but it's nice to know that you can do your laundry, you can wash and dry your clothes 100% free of charge as long as you have detergent, and there are laundry facilities in all of the residence halls. Uh, we really do allow you to personalize your experience too. So, uh, you know, if you are going through and you are putting your, your housing contract in, when room selection does open up, 
you'll be able to select which residence hall you want to live in, what floor you want to live on, even what room number you can live in too. Um, other perks, freshmen, you can drive cars your first year. Uh, you can keep them on campus. They'll be relatively close to where your residence hall is, so you always will be within walking distance of your vehicle at all times. Uh, plus, your parking pass uh, is included in the cost of your tuition, so it's nice to know that's not an additional fee that's going to be charged every semester. Uh, we also do have what are called living learning communities, or LLCs. Uh, so I'll use business as an example. Uh, so if you are in the business program, uh, you have the ability to live with other students that are in the business program. Now, it's not mandatory just because you're a business student, you have to live with other business students. We just like to think that that adds an extra element of personalization during a student's time at the University of Akron. But the residence halls break down into two areas. You have your traditional and then your non-traditional residence halls. So traditional residence halls are going to be where, you know, you have a room that you share with a roommate, and then there's going to be the communal style bathrooms on that floor. So, uh, you know, communal style bathrooms, uh, they're taken care of for you twice a day by our staff, so they're very well taken care of. But if you're looking for a different type of uh, living arrangement, we have the non-traditional residence halls. So non-traditional residence halls, once again, you do share a room with a roommate, but you have your own bathroom inside that room. So if you're looking for a little bit more privacy, the non-traditional residence halls can provide that for you. Really one of the trade-offs is that if you're living in the non-traditional residence hall, you're just in charge of cleaning your bathroom, where in the traditional, that's gonna be taken care of for you by our staff. So with the Akron area, uh, we're very fortunate to have a, a really strong and, and great working relationships with our downtown partners. Like I mentioned, the campus is about a quarter mile away from the major downtown area. So some of these downtown partners include Fortune 500 companies that our students are doing internships and co-ops with every single semester. Uh, if you're an outdoors person, there's plenty of recreational activities. Um, you know, it, if you're into hiking, biking, or running, doing stuff out, outside, there's Ohio and Erie Canal uh, way. It's right now, I think a little bit over 80 miles, but it's uh, once it's fully done, it's going to be a little bit over 100 miles. And there are places where you can connect to it right off our campus. And you'll be amazed 10 or 15 minutes on the, on the parkway and you could be in you know, a different area. And it's just really beautiful down there too. So a lot of our students will go and do a little bit of exploring in the downtown area. Um, some other popular destinations for students include things like the Akron Art Museum, uh, the Akron Rubber Ducks, they are a minor league baseball team based out of Akron, they're a feeder team for the Cleveland Indians, uh, located right kind of by where our Polsky building is, which is at the very edge of our campus. It's a beautiful stadium, uh, I've been there a couple of times, it's always a great time to go ahead and watch a game in a beautiful stadium in downtown Akron. Uh, and then we have dozens of other restaurants that a lot of our students frequent quite often too. Um, so all different types of cuisines, so a lot of things that are going to be able for you to explore in the immediate downtown area. But what I'm going to go ahead and do now is turn it over to my colleague, Greg Landis, and he's going to tell you a little bit more about the application process. Hi, th thanks for joining us today. My name is Greg Landis. I'm one of the associate directors in the Office of Admission um, and really wanted to kind of dive into a little bit now about the application process and scholarship opportunities for you um, at the University of Akron. So right now the process is you can apply either one of two ways. You can apply through uakron.edu or Common App. We don't have a preference over either one. Um, so whatever is easiest for you, if you, our app alone probably will take you about eight to nine minutes to complete if you go to uakron.edu apply. Um, so it's not any essays or anything required to submit um, your application. We are then gonna ask you after you submit the application to provide us with your high school transcript um, ACT or SAT test scores. Um, and please note that the University of Akron for fall 2021 is test optional, meaning that if you have not been able to take the ACT or SAT, um, that is fine. Just let us know and we will review your credentials based on your high school transcript. If you have taken the um, ACT or an SAT and you want to submit those, on the high school transcript is also acceptable. Um, so you do not necessarily need to go to act.org or college board and send the officials. We will take the, the scores on your transcript from high school. Um, we know that the many families are struggling right now. Um, it is tough times for a lot of folks. So we went ahead and waived the application fee for this fall. So normally that's $50 fee. This year there is no fee. Um, so you're looking at probably you know eight to nine minutes to complete the application put in request your school counselor to send us the transcript um, and test scores as I said are optional. 
Um, you can usually expect to hear from us in about two weeks once everything is received and your first communication to let you know your standing will be an email sent to you and then usually follows up with an with your um, official admissions letter and packet along with some with the scholarships you're going to initially be awarded. So test optional. What does that mean? There's a lot of questions that comes up and a couple of the main ones are, will I still be eligible for scholarships to the University of Akron for fall 2021? Yes, you still will be eligible. Um, if, you're, if you do, um, your plans change, and you wanna submit scores, you can do that all the way up until May 1. Also, if your GPA goes up after you initially applied, make sure to send us an updated transcript by May 1. We'll see if there's anything else we can do for your award if it bumps you up to a higher level. Um, and another question that's come up recently is, am I eligible to apply for the Williams Honors College if I do not have a uh, ACT or SAT test score? And the answer is yes. You can apply as test optional for that, for that program also. So one of the things that, that I, um, I think Jake alluded to a, a little bit is we are really trying to, to make UA as an affordable option for you um, coming from the state of Pennsylvania. So a couple of things that we have in place for you initially that we have the Akron Guarantee Scholarship, um, which right now you would need at least a three, if you have a 3.0 or higher high school GPA, um, you're going to be scholarship eligible. Also, we have a lot of folks think coming from PA, my tuition is going to be double, it's <laughs> if not triple. Um, that's not the case. We have the Akron Advantage Award, which is a program for out-of-state students that reduces your tuition um, from 15.5 you, we give you a $3,000 award, so it makes it around 12.5. And so to give you a reference point, our in-state students pay a little under 12. So you're not paying, you're not, you may be paying an extra $250, $300 a semester as a PA student coming to the University of Akron. Um, we also have additional scholarship opportunities. We have the underrepresented student scholarship. We have specific academic scholarships. So if you're looking at business or engineering, they have some scholarship op options at, at, for you in addition as an example. Also, we have a private endowed scholarship. So most of the academic scholarships and the underrepresented scholarship and the private endowed is not gonna be live for you to apply until November 1st. But, but the good news is the deadlines aren't December 1 or they're usually January 1 or February 1. So you have plenty of time to get those submitted after you submit your application to the university. So how the Akron Guarantee Scholarship does, it's a really unique program and what it does is it grows as you complete credit hours here at the university. So after you complete 30 hours, which is on average 15 in the fall semester, 15 in the spring semester, we give you a bump of $500. So if you had an initial award of $1,000 for your freshman year, your sophomore year, that award after you've completed 30 credit hours is now $1,500. And then after you complete 60, we added $750 on top of that. And then 90 as you're heading around the corner nearing your senior year, we bump it up an additional thousand dollars. So you can see that the award grows by that little graph that um, shown on the screen that your scholarship is gonna grow as you progress here at the University of Akron. So, um, the, and we think that it's very unique. It's probably one of the only programs like this in the country that grows with you as you complete credit hours towards your degree. The FAFSA. The FAFSA um, was available to you if you're looking for fall 2021 on October 1st. Um, so if you haven't started that yet, no worries, but it's something that you probably want to um, start working on and plugging away. And we have a great incentive this year too, um, which I'll touch in a minute. Our priority deadline for the FAFSA is December 1st. That seems a long way away. It's coming up pretty quickly here, but December 1 is our priority deadline for the FAFSA. And we have this great new incentive for you um, as we're trying to make it more affordable and trying to help you help you out and have, help your families get you here to the University of Akron. As long as you have applied to, for admission and have your FAFSA on file by December 1st, we're going to offer you a $500 scholarship. So that $500 would be in addition to the Akron Guarantee Scholarship, the Akron Advantage Award, any other awards you get. And uh, um, our scholarships are stackable here. So the only thing you have to do to be eligible for it is apply, um, by December 1st, have your FAFSA on file, and then enroll later um, as a student. Now, just because you do all this, does that mean I'm committed to coming to the University of Akron? No. We would ask for you to have your final decision by May 1st, 2021, to let us know if you're planning on enrolling at the University of Akron. 
once you do do that, you schedule your classes at orientation, there's going to be an addition to your to your um, scholarship award of $500. So it's a great, great incentive if you're thinking about Akron, doesn't commit you to coming or anything, but does, but does offer you the chance to get additional $500. The Williams Honors College, I touched a little bit upon this earlier and there is a specific app for the Williams Honors College. If you go to uakron.edu and put Williams Honors College in, it'll pull the link up and there's the application for you. Their, uh, their deadline is coming up on January 4th. So you do have to apply for admission. You just can't do the Williams Honors College application. Um, that is their priority deadline, January 4th. So what is the benefits in the honors program? Um, the perks are there is gonna be an additional scholarship opportunity. You're gonna get priority registration. You're gonna have your own honors advisor to work with you. And then you're also gonna be able to take some specific honors courses and you could live in the honors complex if you wanted to. Um, about the registration, some folks ask me, what does that mean, priority registration? So if I'm a senior and you're a first time student in the, this fall, you will have the opportunity to schedule before I would for classes. So you, don't, you never have to worry about getting closed out of classes. Um, the other perk to the program is too, and it's really unique is if you, and we've had some students from PA come like, I don't think I wanna do it my freshman year, could I be considered for my sophomore year? Sure. So it's not necessarily a program that you have to get in your freshman year to be a part of. Um, I would encourage you guys to take a look. January 4th um, is the regular deadline. I'm sorry, the priority deadline. And then April 1 is the regular deadline. It says June 1st um, confirmation deadline. So we, I mentioned um, May 1, but they would like to know by June 1 of 2021, whether you plan on accepting your seat in the honors program if offered or you want to um, you're going to pass. Um, and the other question that comes up, if I got an honor scholarship and I don't take my seat, does that affect my other scholarships I've been offered by the University of Akron? And the answer is no. The only thing, the only scholarship it would affect if you did not take your seat and, and place in the honors would be the honors scholarship. So it's a, they're looking usually for a 3.5 GPA or higher. And on their application, it will ask you to write an essay. So what I've encouraged some students recently from PA to do is go ahead and get the application in to the University of Akron start working on your honors application. You have until early January, as I said, to get it submitted. So I know that everyone's really busy right now um, and school, the school day looks different depending on the school you attend. So there's plenty of time to get it done. Um, and it's not something that has to be done but immediately, but you do have to apply for admissions before at the same time you're applying for the honors college. You can't do the honors college and think that that's gonna roll over for your admissions application to the university. This will kind of give you a snapshot. And one of the things I stress is this is an average for the A for the total year cost at the University of Akron with tuition fees on housing camp on campus housing and a meal plan. Um, that is not per semester. That is for the entire 30 weeks of the academic year. These numbers do not reflect in any way any financial aid, um, grants, scholarships a student loan or anything like that that costs. That is just to give you an idea of the range of costs, depending on which hall you, you, you pick, um, to give you a kind of a number to be considering of, of what your total initial cost is gonna to be to attend. Um, not, but as I stress, not counting scholarships or anything else that you're eligible for. The one thing I forgot to mention, we do not do a lot of one-year scholarships. Mo the majority of our scholarships are all renewable, the Akron Guarantee, the Akron Advantage, um, the underrepresented, on the academic, some of the academic program scholarships. So you'll know what the renewal criteria is when you get that, that um, your, when you get notification of them. Um, the other question is, do I have to confirm or say I'm coming to Akron before I can apply for these other scholarships? And that's not the case either. You can apply without being a confirmed student. And I would encourage you to do so um, and just see what you're gonna be eligible for and see what we can do to help you knock down this total cost for the 30 weeks. We get a lot of questions and a lot of emails. Are you guys currently open? And the answer is yes. We are kind of operating right now on a hybrid schedule where we have some students in class a couple of days of the week, then virtual. So it's kind of um, a, a little bit of a mix of what we have going on for our current fall semester. Um, do you have opportunities to visit? Are you hosting in-person visits? Yes, we are. Those are limited though to no more than 10 total guests. So it would mean one student um, coming and one guest. We have a ton of different sessions going on. 
Um, we have we are going to be opening up some Saturdays too, if if that would work for your schedule. Um, to see how, and then we also, I think Jake alluded to maybe earlier, we have a ton of virtual engagement opportunities um, that maybe you're not, you've heard, you went to this session with me and Jake, you were interested in learning more about business, engineering. We have a ton of these opportunities where you can set up and not leave your house and talk to someone about the being an engineer, cybersecurity, um, any, pretty much all of our programs, we have these opportunities. Um, so check out uacron.edu slash visit to see these opportunities coming up. Um, we also have UA First Look, which kind of gives you an idea of what it, what it means to be a ZIP, what it's like to be a student, several video sessions on there. So we have a ton of opportunities for you. And I know that, that some folks think they can't visit or we're not offering visits. We are. We're still following COVID guidelines and everything that um, the state has asked us to do to ensure your safety while you're here on campus. But a ton of opportunities if you're looking to get a feel for what it's like to be a ZIP, to see what campus is about, encourage you to set up a visit at some point um, in the next coming months. This, if you want to pull out your phone and take a shot of this, this is how to get a hold of me and Jake. If, if you have questions, we are more than willing to set up an um, individual Zoom with you, host you on an on-campus visit, talk to your, to your folks, relatives, anything about the opportunities at the University of Akron. So um, please don't be shy in contacting us. I know we're both on email a lot. Um, those phone, the phone numbers ring directly to either Jake or I, uh, we're going to get your call. Um, so we try to return everything as soon as possible. Um, if you leave a message, but email is great too. whatever way you need to connect with us that we can help you in your transition from high school to University of Akron as an educational opportunity for you. We're here to help you. Um, and we, we will make sure that we can do anything we can possibly to address your questions, um, concerns, anything that you need. Um, please feel free to reach out and connect with us. We're here for you to help you. And that's all I had. That's all we had. Jake, do we have any questions or anything? So, uh, Greg, what I'm going to go ahead and do here is stop sharing my screen. And uh, for anybody in the room, if there maybe was something that uh, you heard that we talked about in the presentation, either Greg or myself mentioned, if you want more information, or perhaps if we didn't cover a topic and you wanted to hear a little bit more about your specific topic, feel free to go ahead and post your questions into the Q&A, and then we will be able to answer your questions. Jake, one of the questions is, um, you know, mentioned living on campus, am I allowed to bring a car my first year? And the answer is yes, you are allowed to bring a car your freshman year. Yeah, and like uh, I, I think I mentioned this, but you can park it relatively close to where you live at. So, um, you know, it's not going to be a problem. You won't need to take a bus to get to your car. You will be within walking distance of your vehicle, which uh, is very nice. Um, and then that parking pass, once again, included in the cost of your tuition, too. When does the academic semester start? We traditionally start that last Monday in August. So our this year it was August 24th. Um, for next year, it is August 23rd. And then we usually start the spring semester. We have a nice break um, for students about a month off for, for the holiday season. And then we usually always start the Monday before Martin Luther King Day. So this year, I believe the spring semester is starting January 11th, to give you an idea. And we're always wrapped up by the second week in May. So we got a question here where it said, um, if a student does a co-op and they're adding a year to their time at Akron because of this, does the guaranteed scholarship still apply when I'm on campus? So I can answer that for you. Yes, it does. Uh, if you are in a specific designated five-year co-op program, that will extend to you. So if you're gonna be on campus or if you're gonna be at the University of Akron for five years and you're in a co-op program, it doesn't mean that you're gonna be paying tuition for five years. So let's say, for example, if you're gonna be taking an engineering co-op, uh, yes, that will add another year to your time at UA. It's not designated for you to be a full year away from the university. Usually what students will do is they'll take a co-op maybe fall semester of their junior year and then spring semester of their senior year or fall semester of their senior year. Um, and you're not paying tuition. There's actually, we have one of the lowest co-op fees in the state of Ohio. I believe it's $125 per semester. On the flip side, when you're doing your co-op, 99% uh, of the time it's paid, uh, usually in our co-ops our students are earning anywhere between 15 up to $25 an hour. So a lot of our students are helping, um, you know, they're getting those jobs and it's helping to subsidize for some of the additional costs, whether it be food or your living expenses. So great question. 
is there a way to apply for the Honors College if I already sent my application? Absolutely. You just need to go to the Williams Honors College website. Um, if you go to uakron.edu, um, is that slash honors, Jake? I can't yes. remember. Yeah. Slash honors and click on the application and you can submit that. Um, so that is actually the way you need to do it is for, um, we'd recommend to submit your application first. And then if you're interested in the honors program, um, go on to the honors website and submit the application. As I said, their priority deadline is January 4th. Um, so we still have plenty of time, but yes, you can, you can go back in and do the honors application. And then uh, something about the meal plans. Uh, so another big component of living on campus is having a meal plan. Uh, so we try to make it as easy as possible. We have three different tiers of meal plans. We have a, the technical terms for them are white, blue, and gold, or low, medium, and high. Uh, both or all three of the meal plans come with a combination of block meals and dining dollars. So block meals are what you could utilize at places like Rob's Cafe, which is our main dining hall on campus. It's an all-you-can-eat all style buffet. You can be there as long as you want and eat as much food as you want. I think there's like seven or eight different stations in there. The menu changes every day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner from Monday through Sunday. Um, there's vegan options. There's gluten-free options in there too. Um, usually what students will do is if they maybe have uh, like 45 minutes or an hour and they want to go ahead and, and sit down and relax, you know, just kind of uh, unwind for a little bit, then yeah, they'll probably go ahead and use one of their block meals at Rob's. Now, if you only have 15 or 20 minutes in between class, and you want to grab like a cup of coffee or something to keep you going throughout the day if you have a long day then you can use your dining dollars at any of the other various restaurants we have on campus so um, right now i think we have this is not gonna be a whole comprehensive list but i know we have three starbucks two chick-fil-a's quidoba pan express einstein's brothers bagels annie ends so i mean the list those go on and on with that too so um, our meal plans are really focused on you not having to eat the same thing day in and day out and giving you a lot of different options too. All yeah, these are all great questions, so keep them coming if you have any more. So uh, Greg, maybe you want to tackle this one. Uh, we had a question that said, what is the average number of students to a class? Um, right now, traditionally it's been about 20, 22 to 24 students. I think with some of the social distancing, I think we're looking at 15 and, uh, and um, we will show you if you come to campus, we'll show you how the classrooms are set up, but they're much smaller. But on our average, it's been about 23 to 24 um, students pre-COVID. One of the things I always stress to students is there is not any large classes here, um, even with um, pre-COVID. We don't have any um, first year student classes where you're gonna be one of 600 in a class or 500 or, or anything of that high nature. So I'd say 22, 26 is usually our average class size. Um, I think it's a little bit smaller now with COVID um, guidelines, but you're not gonna feel overwhelmed. And, and I think Jake alludes to this maybe a little bit or two. The professors will know your name they will be, um, they're there for you to support you, help you if you need trouble, or if you're having trouble in a class or anything um, of that nature. But it's not, it's a big, it's, we have about 19,000 students, but we do not have any of these classes where you're gonna walk in your first day on campus and be one of 500 in a class or anything like that. Yeah, Greg, and, and that's something I, I mean, I appreciate. So just putting my own spin on that uh, question, I always like to, to tell students at UA, you kind of get the best of both worlds. Like, you know, you're going to a midsize, you know, university, like Rick mentioned, 19,000 students on campus, 200 academic programs, 340 student organizations, division one sports. But when it comes to, you know, more important things like your classroom size and the interaction, that's where you get the feel of a smaller school because with our average class being between 20 and 30, you're able to, you know, build those relationships with your professor. If you have a question at the end of class, uh, you know, you're going to be able to get it answered and still have time to go to your next class too. Uh, so I think that's where we really do shine is being able to offer those two polar opposites in the same actual package of the University of Akron. All great questions. All great questions. So, uh, Greg, I don't know if, if you talked about this, Greg. I think you did, uh, but I, I think it may just 
be important to talk about it a little bit more. But like if a student is applying um, and they maybe have like a 2.9 GPA, so they're right below the 3.0 to receive Akron Advantage and, and Akron Guarantee. Uh, I mean, they, they can still submit updated transcripts at, even after they apply. Absolutely. So we'll just go with that example Jake said. And, and you know, we would like to see at least, a, you know, a 3.0, you're going to qualify for the Akron Guarantee Scholarship. You're going to qualify for the Akron Advantage Award. If for some reason you had a 2.995 and you submit your application, you get admitted, the first nine week grading period's over, you did really well. Now you're at a 3.08 and like, oh, I should have waited. We will take any updated transcripts with new GPAs all the way up until May 1. So if you are, and the other threshold is on the opposite, if you're below, um, you had that, Jake's example, you had a 2.99 something. Well, what happens if I had a 3.42 and after the first 18 weeks, now I'm at a 3.601. We still want you to send that 3.601 in to see if we can increase your award in, in any shape or manner. And you have all the way up until May 1 to submit any kind of grade changes or increases that you might that might happen during this your senior year. So we do not penalize you for applying um, with maybe not your strongest GPA or your great your grades are going to just go up. Um, we, we will take that into account as long as you send us the updated transcript. We'll see what we can do to increase your award. Yeah, and, and kind of continuing that theme of affordability, um, just you know, like using an example of like a student that has a 3.5 right now. So if you're coming in with a 3.5 GPA, you're going to get once again that $3,000 Akron Advantage Award. You're also going to get another Akron Guarantee on top of that. So those two will stack. Uh, if you get your 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 application into us and then your FAFSA into us before December 1st, that's an additional $500. Plus, with your honors, if you're admitted in the honors program. And you have a 3.5 or higher, those honor scholarships will range anywhere from a thousand up to fifteen hundred dollars per year. So you can really see how the, the snowball really starts to get bigger and bigger and bigger, you know, and really starts to pick up a lot of momentum. And also, um, you know, in years past, I know that you know, if you've had any siblings or brothers and sisters or you know, your parents went to the University of Akron, there had been a cap on the amount of funds that you can actually get from the University of Akron. So we actually do not have that cap anymore. So, um, you know, do definitely do your due diligence and apply for as many things as you possibly can. Even if you're applying for scholarship through your local high school or your county or community or anything like that. And it doesn't matter if it's $50 or $50,000, whatever you can bring from outside sources will just stack on top of your Akron awards. We will never adjust our awards based on what students are bringing from outside sources. So that, I think that is really, you know, touching upon how we're working our very best to make the University of Akron as affordable as possible from students coming from Pennsylvania and other states too. So it looks like we may have time for like one more question. So if you do have anything on your mind, please feel free to go ahead and, and post that to the Q&A. Greg, I don't know um, if, if, if we're waiting on a question to come through, but um, you know, once we do, maybe you could give, uh, you know, since you've been working with uh, Pennsylvania students for, for a little while, maybe you give uh, you know, students a little piece of advice on maybe what they should be doing coming in as an incoming freshman. I would say is the, the students that, um, you know, from PA that I interact with, A, they love it um, here because of its it's, as Jake alluded to, it's on the cusp of the city, but not downtown. They have several of the things that they're used to, where they grew up at, um, in terms of shopping, restaurants, different things um, available to them. And then also, I think the students look to get involved really early in their freshman year. So they're going to join probably two groups, at least that first semester. They're going to join the group in their club, group, um, organization in their major. And then they're going to pick something else outside that they want to do, whether it's a Join the marching band, uh, fraternity or sorority life, um, the AK Rowdies, our student support group. And that is usually a pretty full fall with their class schedule. And then usually that second semester, they might have found something else they want to join. They'll add those on, but um, they like the distance. Um, it's not, you know, depending on what part of Pennsylvania you can get from much of the state with under four hours. Um, and Jake said, we're located in a great spot. We're probably about, you know, an hour south of Cleveland. 
hour and a half, hour and 40 minutes will get you to Columbus. Um, six hours or so will get you to Chicago. Um, New York seven, New York City, seven hours. So we're in a great kind of location for students. And they really seem to love it here in terms of being not too far from home necessarily or within a, a drive um, back to PA. Also, um, just they like the student body is a, a very friendly here. Um, it is a casual campus. Um, students are all here for a purpose. The purpose is to get your degree, um, to create opportunities for yourself um, after college. And our students take it very serious here. And then also a lot of the students from Pennsylvania are involved in a lot of charitable activities we have around campus. So students are involved in donating a lot of their time to help those less fortunate. And so um, that's what I, that's, you know, several names come across my, when you ask me about PA of students that have all taken advantage of those opportunities here at the university. Well, I think that we've pretty much hit our time limit. Um, so I had the screen up. Once again, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact either Greg or myself and we'd be happy to assist you. Uh, but we wanted to thank all of you for coming out, taking time out of your day to listen to us talk a little bit more about the University of Akron. And we hope to see you soon. And we hope to hear from you. Thanks so much. Thank you guys both very much. I'm actually going to put one slide up. Um, we thank you all for joining us today. Um, again, these or this presentation will be available on PACAC. Um, oh, now our slide's not showing up. Okay, um, this, available, this session will be available on the PACAC website. Here is the website. Um, they will, you will be getting a quick survey for questions after this program. So again, we thank you for attending. If you're interested in more sessions, please sign up for those. And we thank Greg and Jake from Akron for the presentation today and joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Bye Thanks. all. Bye-bye.